Hey, Coach, um, I don't know what's going on in the world, but uh, the people uh, the, from uh, the Alley Oop show, the people that put this together, they must have rocked up into some sort of Roman orgy that was going on where all the top comedians and superstars were at and just started snapping photos because last week it was Nazim Hussein. This week we go to... Well, I don't want to downplay Nazim Hussein because he's a superstar, but equal superstar status. Oh, no, no, we got the big, we got the big boy today. We got the, the big, big boy, boy today. Yeah. We have got Peter Elliott somehow or other, again, that I don't know what it is, but somehow or other... He's, he's done something. <laughs> he's decided to join us. And, uh, Peter, fantastic to spend a few minutes with your good self, my friend. It is my absolute honour, Mr. Gaze, Mr. Copeland. Uh, it is my my 16-, 17-year-old fantasies are coming true right now. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> did you wear that hat for us? Did you wear that for us? Or are you no, I, I, I mean, I did wear this hat because I'm wearing a Boston Celtics hat. Uh, <laughs> but it's the hat I wear most days. Um, <laughs> I, I have a hoodie as well. I could have gone the whole like, the whole uniform for you, but um, yeah, so looking forward to uh, the game too. Well, it, it is, and it's an exciting series. And and, and this whole bubble situation, you basketball fan clearly, uh, does it detract from you when you turn on and you're watching any of the hoops? Do you, you know they're in this bubble? Is there an asterisk next to it? What's your take on how the NBA put it together? I think they've done an extraordinary job. The first game I, back in the bubble, uh, the Celtics uh, played the Bucks, uh, yes. and I, I watched it. And, and it kind of looked like they were playing in a high school gym. And it was yeah. a bit, it was a bit weird, but I'm mean, I gonna say a pretty fancy high school gym, you know. Yes. <laughs> um, but once the game started, I have to be honest, and I feel the same with the AFL. I just zero in on the action on the court. As much yeah. as the crowd gives a great atmosphere, and wouldn't it be great to have the crowds, uh, particularly you know, the, the pointy end of the season. Um, but I, I'm watching, you know, can, you know, Jason Taylor make this shot, you know, uh, you know, are the players doing everything they need to do. So I'm, I'm fully watching the game. So I'm still as invested watching, uh, both the NBA and the AFL in the, in the bubbles, uh, than I would be if, um, if, if there was a crowd there and we're outside. Now you got three boys that play basketball. Are they, are, did you, where did they get their talent from, first of all? Is that a bit of a backhanded? No, no, no. no. He's a comedian. The great man here. Oh, right. no, no. Gazy, it wasn't even backhanded at all. It, 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 was, it was a full front blow to the guts. <laughs> no, I, you're right. They, um, they don't get it for me. One, you're assuming they're talented, by the way. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> no, they, they, well, so I, I grew up playing basketball, a junior basketball, um, and was was not wasn't particularly good. wasn't the worst player on the court. My game high was twenty three points. That's nice. something oh, I could right. hat on. Nice. Uh, I also once went to the free throw line after the buzzer and sank both shots to win. Oh, yes. yes. And it was one of those at the Diamond Valley uh, Centre. I'm, I'm sure you know the uh, centre I'm talking yeah. about. There's yeah. like four or five courts there. And the, the other games had finished. So the whole crowd had kind of like the other games and the next game were kind of around. So it was like, I was like, I was playing at the, uh, you know, the uh, Telstra Stadium with the uh, straight to the USA, uh, you know, a few months back. It was fantastic. Made both the shots. So that gets a fair. Every time we walk into that court, I tell the kids. <laughs> they, um, they, so I, you know, I love watching you guys, and that was when you guys were playing. It was the height of the uh, the NBL. It's, it's come back uh, strong in more recent years. But um, uh, and then I kind of I, I fell away from basketball a little bit. You know, I kind of checked in and out with with Boston, and um, yeah. you know, I kind of enjoyed the, the 2008 win with the big three. And yeah. um, but it, it's really been the last five or so years when the kids have really gotten into it that we just went. And I've always been a Boston supporter, but um, like I said, it's always just been checking in and out. Yeah. Uh, but now we are the last five years, particularly that series where where Isaiah Thomas is last year, where he played that in, you know under incredibly uh, you know uh, yep. tough circumstances after yeah. his sister passed away. Um, we just became Boston, compl like a complete Boston household. My my fifteen year old loves the Bruins, so he yeah. is into the hockey as well as the Celtics. But we went to the Celtics. Uh, we went to um, you know uh, Boston a few years ago to watch. Uh, watch a game. We saw, uh, wow. yeah, we saw uh, LeBron. We, we played, took on Cleveland, and um, with Kyrie, uh, we was there and um, won that game. And then we saw uh, the, a game against the Timberwolves, where, where Jimmy Butler was was there as he progressed through another club. And um, and uh, yeah, it was amazing. We, we were two from two from Zip, and we caught up with Aaron Baines on the court afterwards. And um, it was just extraordinary. It was just such a, an amazing experience. Um, 
but, but get back to the question. <laughs> my kids, <laughs> my kids are, you know, they just, they just love basketball so much. It's really, you know, uh, really reignited my, my passion for, for the sport. And they're, and they're, they're pretty good. You know, they're, they're, they're certainly not going to be representing anyone, uh, uh, you know, the country anytime soon, but um, they, 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 they've given us quite a few highlights, to be honest, um, oh, uh, over their junior careers. Well, what about the, a parent? And we, Copes and I still, we coach at the junior level, and one of the toughest things we have to deal with, <laughs> believe it or not, is the parents. Uh, <laughs> what's your advice? What's your strategy with your own kids? Because we love our kids. They take nothing away from them, and we all think that they're better than everyone else. But how do you deal with being the parent? What's in your kids' play? Well, this is maybe the difference between... Andrew Gaze is a basketball parent and then Peter Halley is a basketball parent. I, I know I'm not better than <laughs> I know my kids aren't better than the other kids, you know. So I um I I I try to keep things to a conversation between the, the, the parent sitting next to me, you know, and and anything else I'll take up I'll take take up later on if I feel there's, you know, like with a coach or yeah. But that's that's very rarely happened. The, the kids have been really lucky with their coaches. Over the years, but it, it is, it is tough. There have been some games where I felt like you know, like screaming or jumping, you know, uh, up and down, and um, and there's nothing, you know, nothing gets your blood boiling more than when you, you know, you, you see some injustice on the court, uh, <laughs> a, a bad call from the refs, and uh, there was one game where I had a dad next to me who was being quite loud, and and I could understand his frustration. We were like. Yeah. We, we thought we are getting the rough end of the deal and the ref had to come over to us. And I'm, oh, no. My family had an arm like, oh, no. Got a high. <laughs> this will be on the project next week. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Oh, dear. Hey, hey, now you're speaking of the project. Uh, as far as Co Copes and I are concerned, you're in a team environment there with the project. And yep. we rate you as the Jordan of, of, of the group. Uh, you are the Michael Jordan of the group. And you do this... A great job that we feel, anyway, of... So you deal with some pretty tough issues, but there's always a way in which to, to find humour. Is that every... Is that a challenge when you're, you're on that show dealing with some, some pretty tough issues to address? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's been... Uh, for the first year or so I was on the show, I really... I felt like the kid at the end of the table, you know, and the adults were there, and I, I, I had the card table set up for me at the end, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sat there and just waited to you know to, to throw it throw to a YouTube clip of a you know monkey throwing poo at a nana or something, <laughs> and that's it. And, and, and more re more recently, you know, I, I kind of decided um, that I can't just you know there's only a few of us on the show and you you can't just let all the heavy lifting go to you know Wally or Carrie or whoever else is on the show. So you know there are subjects that I, I'm, I'm not particularly you know, either uh, knowledgeable enough about to, um, to express an opinion on live television. And that's a, the thing I'm also conscious about. Just because I get to sit on television as a comedian doesn't mean I need to express opinions no. about things I don't really right. know enough about. So uh, I know when to get involved. And usually it's about, you know, more social justice, justice yeah. type of issues than, than, um, than anything else or the environment or, you know, same-sex marriage where I'm happy to kind of get involved and, and express an opinion. But um, but it is it is and this year's been a tricky one, you know, because we've been in our own little bubble in a way with yeah. studio audiences being taken away. So that, I used to you know rely a lot on on them because I'm showing clips and I'm making jokes and um, um, it's uh, it, it's been tough. But we've kind of learnt just to lean into each other a bit more and um, and uh, and they've done it. You know, Carrie and my lead and the others on the show have done a great job in supporting me because my job's probably become harder this year as a result of everything. Sure. It's, it's happened and they've been great in uh, their support. My question is, because you're a comedian, do you ever practice your jokes with your kids or your family <laughs> sitting there and, and they, what if they, they go, Dad, it's not funny. That, do you use that or, or how, how does that work? That's, that's true. Coach, I think you've been, you've been chatting to my kids behind my back. Uh, <laughs> my oldest is 17, uh, he's Liam, and, um, and he, uh, when he turned 15, I think it was, I said to him, and I had that age picked out. I thought, okay, when he turns 15, I'll invite him to see my Melbourne International Comedy Festival show. You know, right. performing at the Comedy Theatre, you know, packed house, a thousand people. You know, all he has to do is come and sit in the audience, you know, have, have a bag of Maltesers and enjoy, 
enjoy, you know, enjoy seeing what his dad does for a living. And I uh, said, okay, mate, uh, I think it's time. You know, I think the show's appropriate enough for yep. you. There's a few things you might not like hearing, but you know, whatever. We can chat about that afterwards. But, um, you know, when you come along to the show, you can bring some friends. And he just went, no, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's, no, I, you know, it's about you, but it's funny when you're talking about it because I, I do a TV oh, show called, God. a footy show called The Bounce. It's on every Sunday night. It's on, on Fox footy. Yeah, and, absolutely. And I do, it's not, not to your level, but, uh, you know, I do this segment called Turn It Up. Where I just show clips and you've got to somehow yeah. make it funny. So, and um, you'll do a show and I'm thinking, gee whiz, I've absolutely nailed this. This is just comedy gold. Roll, just magnificent. And I'll come home and the <laughs> missus has done everything bar lock the door. And I'm, and I'd come in with my chest out saying, yeah, I'm the man. <laughs> and they look at me and go, if you ever dish up that shit ever again, <laughs> I'm never allowed back in this house. <laughs> now it is, it, it can flatten you a little bit. And you're like, hey, where's the positivity? Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. Oh. My, my, my kids have been pretty good. They kind of, you know, I think they kind of like what I what I what I do. I think the project's a pretty decent show to be on for the oh, kids. Yes. It, it's not. I was on Rove Live for ten years, and if I was still kind of you know you know getting dressed up in you know or cross dressing or you know wearing latex in front of you know Hollywood actors, <laughs> you know they may be a bit embarrassed by that. But it, it, it's more of a grown up kind of a uh, you know job the, the project. So. They, um, you know, and, and I, you know, occasionally I've gotten, they've gotten to meet, you know, my oldest met Dave Grohl and, uh, you know, uh, wow. one night and before one of the concerts. And so that was, that was pretty cool. So I, they're pretty good, but I think he just, the thought of seeing me sitting in a room, having to listen yeah. for an hour, you know, you know, probably <laughs> talking about, you know, you know, making love to his mother. Um, <laughs> probably not what he really wanted to hear. No, that's, <laughs> that is true. Fair enough. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> how are you? How are you handling this lockdown? Because it's driving me crazy. How are you handling? I, I, I'm pretty lucky, coach. I get to go to work for you know four days a week, so I, I do get to go out. So I'm not as maybe heavily as locked down as you know some others, and, and you know I, I'm very fortunate. Um, we, we've tried to make it as fun as we can. You know, my wife and I have been doing um, these pub crawls around the house, um, where we <laughs> and different pubs and. We actually released a travel book a few weeks ago. That's how ambitious I am. I've released a travel book during a global pandemic. Yeah, we were going to ask you about that. Yeah. <laughs> tripping, tripping with kids, isn't it? Yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah. yeah, tripping with kids. So we worked very hard on it last year, not knowing there was a coronavirus on the way. And um, <laughs> um, but luckily, there's a there's a lot to explore in our in our own country, and um, and hopefully there'll be a bit of a bubble that opens up in New Zealand. And- <laughs> Releasing <laughs> that sort of it's sort of like. The guy that just bought the taxi license a week before Uber came out. <laughs> you know, and you go, oh, shit, the timing just not quite there. But, um, you know what I did when that happened, Gazy? I still <laughs> taxis for quite a period of, uh, that's, of that's time. True. Was that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Hey, hey just um, on the book, because you are a, a, an author as well, and you're so versatile in what you do, but... What's your first love? Like, like is, is stand-up, we, we've spoken to a couple of comedians, and of course we had Nazim on last week, and besides all the other stuff they do, they feel like it's something in their DNA that stand-up makes them work. Is it the same for you? Are you in that genre? Yeah, I, I think once, once you've done stand-up for long enough, and uh, you, you just... It's, it's what I identify as, you know, if, if somebody asks what I do, you know, I'm, I'm a stand-up uh, comic, and... Um, it's it's also the true it's the most true test of where you're at as a kid you know like you can be on radio and you can you know uh just fool yourself into thinking that everybody's loving everything you're doing and they're laughing at every joke you you know but there's no there's no fooling yourself on stage it is a, a true test of um of, of what we do as a living to to stand on a stage with a microphone, you know, I'm not a prop comic, so I have nothing else but a microphone on stage and, and an hour full of thoughts that I've, you know, wow. that I've written myself and there's been no meetings. I'm not <laughs> running by, I run it by my wife, you know, yeah. like yeah. what you mentioned earlier, Coach. Yeah, I, I, I don't run my material past my kids, but I run it by my wife a lot, you know, and, um, right. and she's a great uh, bouncing board. Um, uh, so, um, uh, yeah, so that's, you know, that's why whenever you know, the trolls come for you and, uh, you know, they'll, they'll say, oh. this bloke's not funny. You kind of go, well, it's kind of like, 
No, I, I had a troll recently, you know, and um, I, I usually don't respond to them. No. And um, he just said, you know, you, you're not funny and, and, and this and that. And I said, I said, let me tell you a story. Um, I said, uh, there's this guy who, who, who um, decided he had a dream that he wanted to make shoes. So he, he, um, he didn't have any family. There was no family business connections. He just, on his own, decided he wanted to make, he wanted to make shoes. So he started drawing shoes and designing shoes. And then he kind of made his first shoe and... Then he opened the shop, and then you know he, um, you know he opened the second shop because the shoes were selling like hotcakes, and he designed other kinds of shoes. And then uh, you know the the fa- you know people around the world started wearing his shoes, and he started doing ads, and and he won some awards. He got nominated for awards. He lost some awards, but he won some awards. And he you know he, he made a lot of money making these shoes. Uh, and then one bloke, at, you know, one day, this bloke out of nowhere just runs into his shop and says, "You're shit at making shoes." And I thought, which one do you reckon's you, and which one do you reckon's me? <laughs> <laughs> that is a good, that is a very good analogy oh, that yeah. you present when you're in that caper. But as you say, it's so lonely when you're up on stage and you're there and you've got the whole audience at you. And I don't, I'm not a comedian, but I do some motivational stuff and coach does as well. But there are always those times where, for some reason, you feel like you're delivering the same stuff that you've done over and over. But you don't just don't get the reaction. Now, is it the singer or is it the song? Is it the audience or is it you that just sometimes the audience is not quite with you on the journey? In other words, have you bombed? Have you yes. bombed? What, what did you do? When you bombed? I've, I've, of course, I, I've bombed. I mean, it's become you know like in recent you know like I've been doing it nearly twenty five years. Twenty five years next year, so oh. I haven't bombed for a while. I actually I bombed once. The more, most recent bombing was a weird one. Because it was the night before Collingwood, um, who I'm a passionate supporter of, yes. were playing Richmond in the preliminary final uh, in 2018. We famously won that game. But the night before, I was asked to go and do a function at the past players, uh, you know. So yeah. um, I just said, yes, Renee Kink, famous Collingwood person, asked me to do it. I said, of course, I'm going to do it. And, you know, didn't put a whole lot of thought into it because I do this thing a fair bit. I put a minute you know, whatever. Um, and I get up there on stage and it's just like, I'm looking at a sea full of like faces that are heroes of mine and legends. And <laughs> yeah. they're probably, you know, most of the players are like 55 and over. Like they're, they're, there's, there's a lot of gray hair. There's not many women in the room. And I, I start doing a gig and I, they gave me a lovely, you know, applause. I know I'm a Collingwood supporter. Um, and it was one of the worst gigs I've ever, I've, I've, I've ever oh, done. No. <laughs> it was... It, they just did not respond to anything that I that I said. It was. So then I was just starting. You know, you kind of spend the first few minutes going, "Okay, this is weird. How am I dealing with this? What kind of? How can I change gears?" And and then I just kind of felt myself get a little almost a bit angry on stage, going, "I'm doing this for free. I'm a. <laughs> this is my internal internal monologue." And, um, and they gave me a, uh, a you know a kind splatter of applause on, on you know as I finished. Oh no! I probably I did half the time I was I was going to do, and I left. And I, the table I was sitting at, which had some of the younger blokes, you know Benny Johnson, Dane Swan, yeah. Um, and uh, I just said I, I, I went to the table, got my car kept, and just went. I hope we lose tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh dear! Oh, they are. We've all been there. We've all been there. We're in different. The next night at the game, and he was there. He was emceeing. And he said, "Mate, they're just they're just old farts who want to talk to each other and relive the glory days." You know, anytime they have, oh, you know, oh, yeah, but uh, that was, it, 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 you know, it, 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 it all came back to me because it hadn't happened for so long. Yeah, yeah. Put you back to my early years, Copes, where you just you feel yourself get hot, you know, and, and um. <laughs> You just, you just think, why does everyone in this room hate me so much? <laughs> it's really, the, the, my, my first gig ever was a really good gig. My second gig was even better. And I was thinking, after two gigs, believe it or not, I was thinking, I've got this. Wow. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then the third gig was the worst gig in the world. Like I, I, I started doing like uh, audience participation, like all the questions, you know, hey, where are you from? And they would say, Cranbourne. I'd be like, I don't even know where that is. <laughs> oh. Material. Um, yeah, what do you do for a living, mate? And he'll say, you know, uh, I'm a town planner. I'll be like, oh, I've got nothing on that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
it yeah. was just, it felt like your worst heartbreak times 10. It was just yeah. an experience. Do, do, as a comedian, because you've been doing it so long, do you ever get nervous? Do you like, is there a time when you walk on stage that you're nervous? Only when you're doing new material and maybe in front of a smaller crowd, like, um, yeah. or maybe the night of a show, um, and it's a combination of anxiety and, you know, or, you know, uh, or anxiousness and, um, and nerves. Um, and sometimes if you feel something not going quite the way you would, yeah. you know, you would like it, or, or, or if you've put a lot of, you know, uh, tension into this gig, you know, like you, you've anticipated it. I did the, the Montreal just for last festival. Yeah. Last year, and I'd never performed in America or Canada, in, 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 no gigs in North America. And the first night they get you to do like a practice gig in front of about 60 people. Yeah. And that was, that was really nerve wracking. It's the first time I'd ever been on stage. I wasn't sure if the material would work. It, it went, it went well, well enough. But the next, the next night, was in front of like three and a half thousand people, yeah. and and the the MC was like Wanda Sykes, just you know like <laughs> iconic, you know, comedian, <laughs> and that was that was never it went really well, but it was it was it was bloody nerve wracking, and they don't have any alcohol backstage, which is <laughs> you know, how Australia does it. To be honest, <laughs> to the bar, yeah. Is that is that the mecca for what is the mecca for a comedian when like what is the big grand final that you can get to? I think for me, it probably was just for laughs um, in Montreal. Uh, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival is also, um, you know, a, a big thing. But that's really about doing your own show. Um, you know, um, anyone can anyone can actually do that. You know, I guess maybe winning the Perrier Award, or I think it's they've changed the name. Maybe it's the Foster's Award now. Actually, um, in Edinburgh, that's for the best show. That that may be yeah. the, the, the pinnacle. But as far as being on a lineup show at Montreal, like. You know, it's 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 a pretty uh, it's a pretty awesome. Is, thing. is it is it hard when you're about to go on? And those shows, I know it's an edited version we see on the telly, but I I, I love watching them. Um, is it tough when you're there and there's been two or three just go on before you that's absolutely smashed it out of the park? I mean, <laughs> and, and, and that's why I learned very early on. Whenever I'm on a panel, I'm on first. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you sort of, yeah. if I'm not on first, I'm not doing it. Like, is, <laughs> but with a pro like you, do you ever go, geez, I, I hope they, I don't want them to go bad, but if they just sort of stuff up a little bit, <laughs> you never. Well, yeah, that's a good point. I think you might, ideally, you want them to have a good, solid gig. You know, <laughs> you don't want the bomb, but, you know, I, if you could plan it, a good, solid gig, certainly not somebody who has just torn it apart, you know, like, I remember emceeing the Melbourne uh, uh, Melbourne Festival Gala, and um, and that's also like it was a massive thrill. I've done it twice now, and that was a massive thrill. My hometown, I grew up just going to the comedy festival, loving it, and it was just um, amazing that I got the opportunity to not only perform in it but that, then emcee it. And I've done it twice, and and there was a great comedian uh, out of the US called Bridget Everett, who's um, been in movies like Trainwreck with Amy Schumer, and yeah. She's very, uh, you know, in your face and she's got this amazing voice and she sings and she kind of goes in the audience and she almost, she, she's a solidly built woman and she kind of puts her boobs in people's faces and, and, uh, and she's like, <laughs> it's a pretty provocative kind of song and it just went off in the, in, in the, um, in the, uh, in the theatre and she went, like walked down and, and, and basically got from the stage and down, boobs in people's faces, walked to the back of the theatre and ended that and then the audience was standing ovation. And I was supposed to just introduce the next guy, a, a Scottish comedian called Larry Dean, first time in Australia. And I just made the call. I just, I just went, I'm walking out. I walked out. And all I had to do was just, you know, like, an MC with less experience, they would have just rode that kind of wave and gone, keep it going for Larry yeah. Dean. <laughs> you can do because Larry Dean would walk out and nobody would be listening to him for the first minute or two. Yeah thinking about that so instead of riding that wave what you have to do is actually just bring the audience back almost back to level and then you know and i you know just for about a minute on stage just almost i had to calm them down yeah. more so than excited which is and then i brought on larry dean and i remember at the after party he just came up to me and said thank you so much i was i was petrified i was backstage thinking oh my god i'm gonna have to find this and he just he just yeah. a, a nice place for me so yeah you kind of yeah you so having somebody completely rip the, the, the stage apart is not what you want before you uh, go on.
Yeah. Wow. Hey, you do the um, the How to Stay Married, the the, the, the show. I, I, as we're doing a little bit of research, we don't do a whole lot, but a little bit of research. <laughs> that uh, it's not only you are a superstar in it, but you 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 do a lot of behind the scenes stuff too. Apparently, you you directed a few episodes and, and and done that type of thing. Is that sort of the next incarnation of you? Is that your is that where you're heading? Is that stuff that sort of no, he wants a Netflix juice. special. That's what you, that's where the money is, pal. No, yeah. I'm, 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 yeah, that's true. No, <laughs> that's I thought you were saying, Coach, I, I'm, I'm lobbying for a position. I, 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 I can be directed very well. I think I've got great acting skills. But no, he's, or a co-host on the Elliot podcast. That's, that's you know, <laughs> either or, either or. Um, but no, I, um, I think so. I mean, I, I really love, um, I've loved directing. It, it, it's tricky because. Um, I'm writing um, one of the leads in, in How to Stay Married and uh, producing it. Um, so I think when we, if we do a third series, which we're, we're planning to, um, I may just direct the one episode just to kind of, you know, take the pressure off myself a little bit. Um, but I love doing it and I'd love to do more of it. It's hard because I'm, I can't take any more time off in the project to direct other stuff. Um, but then, you know, once, once Channel 10 decided my head has no place being on TV anymore, um, uh, which I'm surprised that I can still get away with it, but um, um, they, um, I'll, 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 yeah, I would love to direct more and produce more and just kind of get new faces and, and, and voices on, on television. Yeah. Hey, now we know you got to go. A couple of, a couple of more questions. Who wins? Who wins the AFL Grand Final? Uh, Collingwood, Copes. Uh, of course, he's going to say Collingwood. Of course. Uh, I think, I think Geelong might be, and I, I, I constantly write Geelong off, but. Um, they, it all depends where the, where the game is played. If, if it gets played in Perth, then I think you know you can lock the, the Eagles in. Um, but as I'm not sure when this is going out, but we the, the, the Pies play the Lions this Friday night, and if the Pies can get over the Lions, I think this momentum might build for Collingwood, and we've got some good players coming back in Jordan Dugowie, he's still yeah. side by Jordan Howard and Trelaw. So um, if we can get over this week, um, the Cavalry just might arrive just in time. Well, the other th good thing that you do, you're, you're very well connected with Collingwood and all, all the superstars that are going around. But the other thing is, is that there's a superstar, Strawny. He's, um, he's, he, you're very close friends, I believe. Have I got that right? I thought they were brothers. I thought brothers are uh, very brothers. close friends at the very yeah, least. Yeah, they look alike. I know that. Uh, is he is he sort of still lurking around, just uh, looking for a, an opportunity? He, he came out of uh, retirement um, for uh, lockdown one, and he. he answering various questions. I think he was pretty keen actually to, to maybe head to the States for some NBA action, to be honest. Um, <laughs> that's, that's I know Melbourne United was sniffing around, you know, um, but <laughs> I, um, I, he's around and I, I think he's, he's, he's almost given up. Uh, I, I think he, he, you know, Malthouse and now Nathan Buckley, will, you know, refused to play him. Oh dear. Almost 12 years now, so <laughs> I think he's taken the hint. <laughs> Hey, uh, hey, Pete, uh, our time is up and you have been, it's that, we've, we could bang on with you for hours. It's a delight to uh, listen to your stories and your experiences. Uh, you do a fantastic job on the project. And I say that, you know, I, I, I've called you the Michael Jordan and I'm sure you don't probably think that, but you're integral to that show and uh, you do a brilliant job of it. We love your work and uh, thanks very much for your time, for giving us a little bit of your time, sharing your thoughts and... Um, all the very best with all the many, many projects in that book. Hopefully thank you get, get that book going. And yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And I just, before I go, I, do, I want your, both of your honest opinion. Can Boston win it? Yes, they do. Oh. oh, no. Oh, come I, on. That, that's not the answer I wanted. I no, don't no, think. No, that's, the that's probably not the answer you wanted. But, okay, look. Clippers will win it. Boston, you know. Maybe well, I think it. this is the thing. You've got to pray that Gordon Hayward gets back and gets healthy. Because I think if he is there, then I think you do have a, a shot at it. But the one that's sneaky, that I, I, I'm i going to look like a genius if they get over the line, is the Miami Heat. Yeah, I, 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 the Miami Heat, they don't have the sort of the big names, but gee, they're playing well. They beat Milwaukee. They play, they play well together. Yeah, they do. Uh, they today, well so together. that's the one. But no, the Celtics, you're lucky for the next three or four years, they're going to be thereabouts. They're going to be there. They got some big superstars on that team, so yeah. yeah. I'm not sure they can win it, but um, but no, you, you've got a lot to look for. Hey, you want enough, pal? You have enough rings. That's true. The Boston Celtics have enough <laughs> spreading around, pal. It's been twelve years, though. It's been twelve. <laughs> hey, that's a good point, coach. 
very well, good point. He's just uh, on the Celtics, who have got more rings than they know what to do. And, and, and still then he's on more. Collingwood. Come Mate, on, you just jump on the on the big ticket items. <laughs> well, it's been twelve years for the Celtics and ten years for the Pies, so I'm due for another one. <laughs> no, and then you could get the double. Who knows? Hey, uh, thanks very much, Peter. Really appreciate it. Mate. We appreciate it, man. Thanks. To- Thanks, Legends. It's, it's, it's a real thrill to chat to you guys. And, um, yeah, uh, more strength to you. Good man. Thanks, Pete. This has been a No Filter Media production. Say what you want.